This is part 75 of SQL Server tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss snapshot isolation level in SQL Server. As we can see from this table, just like serializable isolation level, snapshot isolation level also does not have any concurrency side effects. So the obvious next question that comes to our mind is, well, then what's the difference between serializable and snapshot isolation levels? The difference is serializable isolation is implemented by acquiring locks, which means the resources are locked for the duration of the current transaction. This isolation level does not have any concurrency side effects, but at the cost of significant reduction in concurrency. On the other hand, snapshot isolation doesn't acquire locks. It maintains versioning in TempDB. We'll discuss versioning in detail in a later video session. For now, understand that snapshot isolation doesn't acquire locks. Since snapshot isolation does not lock resources, it can significantly increase the number of concurrent transactions while providing the same level of data consistency as serializable isolation does. Let's understand this with an example. I have two instances of SQL Server Management Studio running here. We have this table TBL inventory in the sample DB database that keeps track of how many iPhones we have in stock. And if you look at this transaction one, we have set the transaction isolation level of this to serializable. And all we are doing here is updating items in stock to five. And if you look at transaction two, again, we, are, we have set the transaction isolation level to serializable. And in this case, we are reading the same data row. Since we are using serializable isolation level here, you know, this transaction one is going to lock the resource while this transaction is in progress. That means transaction two will not be able to access that data. Let's look at that in action. So let's go ahead and execute part of this transaction. So we didn't commit or roll this transaction back yet. So this transaction is in progress now. And now when we execute transaction two, look at that. The transaction is blocked, right? Because why transaction one has locked the resource that transaction two requires. Now look at what's going to happen when I commit this transaction. At that point, transaction two is allowed to move forward and it retrieved you know, the committed data from the database. So let's go ahead and commit this transaction. And now let's see how things are going to change when we use snapshot isolation. To use snapshot isolation, we have to enable that first at the database level. And to enable snapshot isolation at the database level, we have to use alter database statement. And the database that we want to alter is sample DB because that's the database where we have our TBL inventory table. So the name of the DB is sample DB and we want to set allow underscore snapshot underscore isolation on. So let's execute that statement. So this is going to prepare the database for snapshot isolation. And the next thing that we want to do is set the transaction isolation level to snapshot. All right. Now let's change this value back to 10 and let's select the data from the table to make sure that we still have that value 10. Now let's go ahead and execute transaction one. Let's try to update it to a value of five. Now transaction one is still in progress because we didn't commit or roll it back. Now if we select data from this table, obviously we will look at a value of five. You know that data is not committed yet. and when we execute transaction two, look at what we are going to get back. Now the first thing to notice is the transaction is not blocked. While transaction one is writing to table TBL inventory, transaction two is not blocked. It allowed it is allowed to continue. And look at the data it has read. It has read a value that was in the table before transaction one started. Okay, so that's what snapshot isolation does. It uses 
it uses versioning. So when this transaction started, at that point, whatever you know data it had in the table, it made a copy of that in the tempdb database. And that's what this transaction 2 is allowed to read. And that's what we see here, value 10. Okay, so when we commit this transaction, you know, the value 5 will be permanently stored in the DB. But the point here is that snapshot isolation does not use locks. Instead, it uses versioning. Okay, and that's why the reads are able to continue forward without being blocked while another transaction is updating the same data. So just now, we have looked at an example of reading the data using snapshot isolation. Now let's look at an example of using, you know, basically modifying data using snapshot isolation. So here, uh, let's go ahead and update the value back to 10. And let's select that to make sure we still have a value of 10 in the DBA. And, you know, here we are updating the value to 5 and instead of select here let's use update statement so update tbl inventory set items in stock equals let's set it to 8 where id equals 1 all right so in both the cases we are trying to change it to a va uh, different value here it's trying to update it to a 5 i mean to a value of 5 here it's trying to update it to a value of 8 let's see what's going to happen so let's execute part of this transaction and now if we select what we have in the DB you know it's 5 and that's not committed yet the transaction is still in progress now let's go ahead and execute this transaction now notice this now the data is locked you know we are not able to move forward that's because you know both the transactions are trying to update the same piece of data so when we use snapshot isolation and when we try to update data that another transaction is updating the, the transaction will be blocked and how long will it be blocked it will be blocked until transaction one completes and when transaction one completes what's going to happen well let's look at that in action so I'm going to commit this transaction so command completed successfully. So we committed the transaction. And look at what happened to transaction 2. It failed with an error message. So why did we get this error message? That's because imagine what could have happened if transaction 2 was allowed to continue while transaction 1 was in progress. When transaction, If transaction 2 was allowed, it would have updated items in stock to 8. And after that, transaction 1 would have changed that value weight to a value of 5. So it is overwriting that. That means we have lost an update. So to prevent that concurrency side effect of lost update, this transaction is aborted while another transaction is you know, updating the same data. And the transaction eventually fails with an error. And if you look at this error, this error makes you know perfect sense so let's paste it in the notepad let's copy that from here and notice what the error message says snapshot isolation transaction aborted due to update conflict you cannot use snapshot isolation to access table tbl inventory directly or indirectly in database sample db to update delete or insert the row that has been modified or deleted by another transaction retry the transaction or change the isolation level for the update or delete statement now if you want to complete the work that this transaction is doing then you will have to rerun this transaction and look at this when I rerun this transaction it's going to work without any issues so if we select the data back from the table we are going to get a value of 8 Thank you for listening and have a great day.